Hello, George Romanich here again. We are continuing exploring the beauties of Coriolis force. Today's problem is related to one of my previous videos, and the problem is now on your screen. You will kindly remember that in my video on geopotential, I dropped pen from my balcony And that distance is approximately a uh, distance from the top of my nose, from, which, from where I drop the pen to the surface is 8 meters. I am in Montreal, which is latitude 45.5 degrees north. And the question says, find deviation caused by Coriolis force in the horizontal direction. So pen, instead of going straight down, will actually de deviate. And this deviation in the horizontal direction, small d, is what we need to find. Gravity, g, is 9.81 meters per second squared. Before we start solving this problem, some of you might say, I don't understand this at all. Over here, there was no vertical component of the Coriolis force. And now, all of a sudden, it seems that we are asked to find vertical component of the Coriolis force that is causing acceleration in the horizontal direction. The answer to that question is we neglect that component. We neglect component of the Coriolis force in the vertical direction. And uh, that's because that component of the force is very, very weak compared to the horizontal components. And today we will demonstrate that because you will see that this D that we need to calculate is indeed a very small number. For those of you that are interested in this even more, this effect is called, namely, vertical component of the Coriolis force. This effect is called Eutvos effect, where O's come with these two dots above them. So the fellow was Hungarian, I think. And uh, to be honest, I don't know how to pro uh, properly pronounce that. So if you are familiar with Hungarian language, you can let me know in the comment section below. Now, to start tackling this problem, you will remember from my previous problems related to finding deviation due to Coriolis force that this D will always depend on time. So it is useful to find time that it will take for this pen to reach the surface of the Earth. If I plot pen here, I zoom in, so this is pen. Height is like so. And uh, the only force acting on the pen is gravity. Mass of the pen times g, and g is given. Now we, we neglect, of course, uh, resistance of air or any other force for that matter. So the third Newton's law says that mass of this pen times acceleration of the pen in the vertical direction needs to be sum of all forces in that vertical direction. But there is only gravity. So we get that mass of the pen times acceleration of the pen. But gravity is acting in the opposite direction of positive z, so we get negative mass of the pen times g. Mass of the pen, mass of the pen cancels, and acceleration in the z is equal negative g. OK, well, what is acceleration in the vertical direction? That is change of velocity with time is minus g. Now to find w, we integrate this equation. Well, first we separate variables. This is differential equation. So dw is negative g dt. And now I integrate this from some time t equals 0 when the pen is here and the vertical velocity is 0 
to time t when the pen hits the surface and it has vertical velocity w. So that will be w is negative g t. And negative w makes sense because the pen is falling, which is in the opposite direction of positive w, which is upwards. But I do not know w. I know this height. So I need to integrate one more time. To do that, I recognize that w is dz dt, and that is negative gt. Again, I separate variables. So dz is equal to negative g t dt. And now I integrate this. At time t equals 0, pen was at the height h. And at time t, pen hit the surface, and that's height 0. So solving this integral will give me that negative h, 0 minus h is negative h, is equal negative g t squared over 2. Minus and minus will cancel, and I will get that t will be equal square root, so it will be 2h divided by g. And this is time that it will take for this pen to hit the surface if I drop it from 8 meter above the ground. Of course, we could plug in numbers now and calculate this time. I am sure it's very short time, but this is not what the question is asking, so we are not going to bother with that. What the question is asking to find this d, but we will use this result to find it. So let's write this result somewhere over here because I will... Well, let's just continue solving problem over here. If I need more space, I will erase this part. Now we need to find vertical component of Coriolis force. It's not written there, so we have to start. We have to start from vector equation and find it. Now. I am really interested in acceleration, so I'm not interested. So acceleration as a vector due to Coriolis force is equal Coriolis force per mass. So really, this acceleration is equal negative 2 uh, omega cross v. Now, from my pre I'm not going to rederive this here. From my previous videos, you should know that components of omega in Cartesian coordinate system are zero. There is no omega in the zonal direction, namely west-east. Uh, omega cosine phi in the meridional direction, south to north, and omega sine phi, which is a uh, component of omega in the vertical direction, where, where positive uh, vertical direction is upward. Phi is latitude, omega is magnitude of angular velocity of the Earth, 7.27 times 10 to negative minus 5, uh, to negative uh, 5 per second. And we also know that this velocity vector v in this problem does not have horizontal components, and the only component is actually negative w. Vertical velocity, but negative because the pen is falling down. So now we know co this one, you just have to know it, 
And you can know it by watching videos where I derived this explicitly at least three, four times, or you can watch some other videos or read some book about that. That being said, A Coriolis is equal negative two. Now we need to solve this determinant that has first row being i, j, k, and these are unit vectors in the three principal directions, omega, doesn't have any component in the x direction. It has omega cosine phi in the j and omega sine phi in the z or k direction. And velocity vector is 0, 0, negative w. OK, so this is further equal negative 2, which will multiply in the, in the i direction, I cross this column, this row, I will have this, so I will have negative w omega cosine phi minus this times this is 0. And that will be in the i direction. Minus in the j direction, I cross this row and this column. This is 0 minus this is 0. So I get 0 minus 0 in the j direction. And plus in the k direction, I cross this column, this row. I get 0 minus 0, which is again 0. Or this is further equal, this minus and this minus will give me plus. So I will get 2w omega cosine phi in the i direction, and there is nothing in the other two directions. So this is my Coriolis acceleration in the horizontal direction, okay? Where we now have to keep in mind that this w is a positive number because I put minus here in relation to my problem over here. So that means if w here is positive, then the deviation will be towards the east in the positive i direction. So if when I drop this chalk, the deviation was towards the east, OK? OK, now when we found that, we can combine this with the first part of our problem and find, uh, complete the problem. To do that, I need more space. OK, so let's erase some stuff. Let's erase our pen. OK, so we got that. Coriolis acceleration in the x direction is 2w omega cosine phi, and I'll write it as a scalar, so I omit unit vector i. But now I know that this is du dt. Acceleration is change of velocity in time, and this is in the x direction, so, so I have a u component of velocity, is 2, o, two two omega w. Well, we saw, I erased it, but in the first part of the video, we demonstrated that w is g times t and times cosine phi. OK, t, I have it here, so I will get that this is uh, equal du 
So this is equation that separates variables. D omega g t cosine phi dt. Or I get, if I integrate this from time t equals 0 when the pen is here, u component is 0 at that time. All components are 0. And I will have some u component at the surface at time t. So I will have that u is 2 omega g cosine phi. And here I will have t squared over 2. OK, but I need to integrate this one more time because I'm not interested in u. I'm interested in this d. And I do that by know knowing that dx dt is u, d dx dt is u, and that is equal 2 omega g cosine phi t squared over, but over nothing because I will cancel this 2 and this 2. So I will only have here t. Uh, 3, 3, okay, over 3. Yes, so when I solve this, as you can see, I'm doing this real time. So if I mess up something, I mess up something. So 2 and 2 cancels. Integral of t squared is t cubed over 3. Everything, I think, is okay. Except it's not. I already integrated the right side. OK, let's do it again. This is when you're doing things live. So let's write it step by step. u is dx dt. And that is equal, 2 and 2 cancels. That is equal omega g cosine phi t squared, OK? Now I separate variables. dx is equal omega g cosine phi t squared dt. And now I integrate. These are constants, so they can go in front of the integral. At time, t equal 0. This deviation in the x direction doesn't exist, so that is 0. And at the time t, when this pen hits the surface, the deviation is this d that we are looking after. That means that d is equal here omega g cosine phi, this integral is t cubed over 3. Excellent. Finally, I substitute this t over there. And I get that this result is, let's write it, omega g over 3. So this 3 I moved here, cosine phi t cubed. So that would be 2 times h over g to power 3 over 2. Cubed, so cubed and square root is 1 over 2. So we get 3 over 2. And now we just need to plug in numbers because we solved the problem. Omega, we know it, 7.27 times 10 to power negative 5 per second. G is 9.81. It's given over there. 3 is 3. Phi is latitude. It's given 45.5 degrees. So we can calculate this cosine. H is 8 meters. And again, G is over here. So I could combine this G, make this a little bit more fancy, but I'm not going to do it. So if you plug in the numbers, Let's see. If you plug in the numbers, 
Well, first of all, let's see if I have the correct answer. To me, it looks I do. If you plug in numbers, you get that this deviation is 0 0.35 millimeters. So that means when I dropped this pen from my balcony, instead of pen falling straight down, it deviated towards the east and deviation at the surface was below one millimeter. 0 0.35 millimeters. So that means this chalk deviated even less because it is falling from smaller distance and you can see that the fall time again depends in this case on the cube of time. And that's how you solve these problems related to vertical component of the Coriolis force. And now you also see why we tend to neglect these effects in atmospheric sciences because they are very, very small. Now, another thing, just let me tell you. You can see that when you are at the North Pole or South Pole, doesn't matter, that this effect is zero because cosine of 90 degrees is zero. The effect, namely Eotvos effect, is the largest at the equator because cosine of zero is one and you get this term being maximized. So to recap, when it comes to horizontal components of the Coriolis force, they are the strongest at the North and South Poles. Quite the opposite, vertical component of the Coriolis force or Eotvos effect disappears at the poles and the maximum effect is at the equator. Things that are descending are deviating towards the east and things that are ascending are deviating towards the west. Until next video, goodbye.